Hey guys, it's Cece, and today I am here to do an oversized February book haul. I don't even know how many books I'm going to be talking about in this video because some of them are still in a box, and I don't remember how many I ordered. So hopefully at the end of this video I will have counted how many that I've told you about, and then I'll be able to tell you that this is the number of books I'll be talking about in this video. Is it... <laughs> Is it big? I'm so scared. So today I'm talking about all the books I acquired in the month of February, and at the end of this video I'm going to be opening up a book outlet package. I ordered like a certain number of books from book outlet. I think I, it was like a 35 to $40 um, shopping trip at book outlet, so I have a bunch of books to talk about there. But that's gonna be at the end. So let's wait. Let's let's build up the suspense. And first I'm gonna talk about all of the other books that I have. I have three stacks that I'm going to talk about. So I have the stack that I purchased myself. Most of them I purchased secondhand. A couple I got through like online retailers or uh, pre-ordered. I have a stack of stuff that was sent to me from publishers or subscription boxes. And I have a little stack of books from all of you. Some of you sent me gifts. It was really, really nice. I totally didn't expect it, but I have a bunch of gifts to talk about. So let's go ahead and start out first with the books that I purchased myself. There's a large stack of them, so I hope you're ready. <laughs> Hold up, real quick. I know, it's me editing CC. back to interrupt yet another video. I'm here to let you know two things. First of all, uh, the fact that I filmed this video like two months ago, so if I am not using current terms to refer to the state of the world or what's going on in my life, it's because this was filmed uh, over two months ago. I am working very hard on getting back to filming, it's just been a little difficult lately, and I apologize for that. Thank you for all of your understanding. The other thing is that I wanted to let you know that this video is sponsored by Skillshare, so thank you very, very much to Skillshare for sponsoring this haul. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes in hundreds of subjects. It's an incredible platform and premium membership gives you unlimited access to all of these courses, plus that premium membership works out to be less than $10 a month. I know that I am not the only one having a hard time right now, and I talked about in my last Skillshare mention picking up new hobbies, and I am continuing forward with that myself, trying to get into new interests. An interest that I have recently been invested in pursuing is embroidery. I think I talked about that in my last mention as well. It's been something I've always been invested in learning about, and I just have felt like maybe now's the time. So today I wanted to recommend a video on embroidery, some embroidery 101 if you, like me, are a newbie. I wanted to recommend a course called Painting with Thread by Daniel Cloth. It's a really in-depth beginner's guide to getting into embroidery, and I think it's super helpful. If you're interested in Skillshare, you can get your first two months of Skillshare Premium absolutely for free if you use the link in the description down below. That's gonna get you unlimited access for free for two months. Skillshare is a great platform. They make what I do here on this channel possible, and they support so many creators, so please consider clicking that link down in my description. It would be the absolute best. Okay, with all of my thanks and with my explanations out of the way, I'm going to turn it back over to CC from two months ago when the world made a lot more sense. So first I wanted to mention a stack of books that I got at Value Village. Value Village has a deal right now, or they always have a deal. It's something like four by four books get the fifth one for free. So uh, five of these, whatever that number is, I got in one trip, and then the other two I got on a different trip. So Value Village Hall, first up we have I Almost Died in the Value Village when I saw this. Uh, we have Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia in the hardcover Book of the Month edition. This has been on my like must-have Book of the Month list. If you don't know, I've been collecting Book of the Month editions because I think they're beautiful. And Gods of Jade and Shadow was one of my most anticipated releases of last year, so I never expected to just run into a Value Village and see this on the shelf. This is adult fantasy set during the jazz age, and it is a Mayan fantasy. There's a lot of Mayan mythology here, and the book is heavily inspired by Mexican folklore. And it is about a main character who accidentally frees the Mayan god of death. This had so much hype last year. I know, I know I'm going to love it. This was like my best thrift store find 
or one of my best thrift store finds of February. Also, while I was on that Value Village run, I decided to use that sale to get some books that were out of my comfort zone. So these are books that might appear in future out of my comfort zone videos. We got The Favorite Sister by Jessica Knoll. I don't know anything about this. I had heard of Luckiest Girl Alive by Jessica Knoll, which is a thriller as is this, but I have been trying to get more into thrillers lately, reading some hyped thrillers, and I've heard like mixed things about Jessica Knoll, but I thought that maybe it would be fun to try one of her books as an out of my comfort zone read, because this is a like somewhat hyped thriller. So yeah, I don't know anything about this. I'd rather go in not knowing but I bought it. I also got The Perfect Nanny by Layla Slimani. This is also a thriller, a psychological thriller. It's about a French Moroccan lawyer who decides that she is going to get a nanny. She wants to go back into the workforce, but then there's some tension between this married couple and the nanny, and it'll build from there. Like I said, this was an out of my comfort zone pick. It's like a domestic thriller, a suspense-driven book, and I thought it looked interesting. Also, the fact that this is part of like the thriller genre, the mystery genre, and it's not by a white author, that was another reason I gravitated towards it because I think that that is a genre that's very, very dominated by white authors, particularly white women. So I was curious about that as well. I also got Opposite of Always by Justin A. Reynolds. This is a YA contemporary. Um, I think I was drawn to it because I know it has some kind of like alternate lives or doing overs of lives. Oh, it's a do-over. Basically, this is about a main character named Jack who meets this girl and everything is perfect and then she dies and that should be the end of it, but the death sends him back to the beginning when he first met Kate. Um, and I'm really drawn to stories about do-overs of time loops and alternate realities, places where a story changes tracks completely. I'm very invested in that kind of plot. So that's why I grabbed Opposite of Always. I'll let you know if I like it. The last book that I'm pretty sure I got with this collection of books at Value Village was The All Girl Filling Station's Last Reunion by Fanny Flagg. I don't know anything about this book. It's just like every few years I try to read another book by Fanny Flagg. Um, Fanny Flagg wrote one of my favorite books where is it? Oh, it's down here. Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe, and I've read a couple of her other books. I've actually read Can't Wait to Get to Heaven. It's right on the cover. And no other book that I've read by her ever matches Fried Green Tomatoes, but I'm really charmed by, like, the southern small town nature of them. So I grabbed All Girl Filling Station's Last Reunion, because I love to give a Fanny Flag book a try every couple of years or so. The last Value Village book that I wanted to mention, I got a totally different time, a totally different Value Village. Yeah, um, that's Lena by Jacqueline Woodson. I bought this because I've been interested in trying a bunch of Jacqueline Woodson books, like going back into her backlist. And so I saw this and I grabbed it. Um, and then I didn't realize until I got home that it's a companion novel. It literally says it on the cover, I just noticed. It's a companion to I Hadn't Meant to Tell You This, which technically comes before this book. So I didn't reread the back. I read it in the store, immediately forgot. I'm not going to read the back again until I can get I Hadn't Meant to Tell You This and read that first. Um, I've read a couple of Jacqueline Woodson books. I think that she's a brilliant writer. She was doing work in queer YA before like so many other people and she's written so many incredible books. So I saw this and I was just like, yeah, I do want to get more into Jacqueline Woodson's backlist. I'm going to get this. The other stack of books I purchased myself is a stack of six, six books that I got at Half Price Books. I've read exactly one of these books before and that book is Everything Leads to You by Nina LaCour. This is one of my favorite FFYA books of all all time. It's a mystery and a romance set in California surrounding like the movie industry and the golden age of Hollywood. It's set during the modern day but they're solving a mystery from the golden age of Hollywood and it's brilliant. I have wanted a copy since I read it in like 2016 um, and then I just so happened to find this hardcover at Half Price Books. They never have a great YA selection but I actually grabbed a couple of YA books so it's pretty imp I was pretty impressed with Half Price Books when I visited this time. 
because this is one of my faves and I'm so glad that I finally own a copy. The other YA book I got was purely driven by my love for the author and that is The Archived by Victoria Schwab. This is another book where I don't know the plot of it, but Victoria Schwab is an auto-buy author for me. I own most of her books. I love most of her books and this is one of her earlier releases that I never got the chance to read. Um, I don't remember what the deal was with this series. I know that this is a place where the dead are archived, like the archive is an archive of the dead, but that's all I know. And I don't remember if this is part of that series that was discontinued. I literally knew nothing about it. I just saw the archived and went, yes, a Victoria Schwab I haven't read yet. I'm going to buy it. Now I own it. I also have Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This was really recommended to me when I was looking for an audiobook for me and my roommate Brian to listen to when we were driving here to move. Uh, Dark Matter was suggested a lot, Blake Crouch was suggested a lot, so I saw it was a half price books and because it was so highly recommended I decided to give it a try. Also it was literally on clearance for three dollars. Three dollars. So... But this is a sci-fi book where a man wakes up and the world he is in now is not the one he used to know, which is a trope I'm familiar with in, like, film, but I haven't read so much in fiction. And this is really hyped. I just thought, like, I've seen a lot of people really, really recommend this book. And I don't read a lot of, like, sci-fi or thrillers by white dudes, so... I was curious about how highly this was recommended and I thought it would be another good like out of my comfort zone read. Oh, this is also from Value Village. I forgot a book from Value Village. I completely forgot about uh, My Brilliant Friends by Elena Ferrante. This is a book I picked up because I recommended it to my mom a few years ago. I haven't read it, but she likes a lot of similar books that a lot of like literary fiction booktubers were talking about when I first started. So she was looking for something new to read. I picked out a book that was really hyped in the literary fiction booktube community. I suggested My Brilliant Friend. And it is book one of the Neapolitan novels, and my mom loved it. She read it, she went out and bought the sequels, she loved, loved them. And this became yet another book in the list of books I've recommended to my mom that she's loved, and then she's like, I can't wait to talk to you about these books, and I'm like, oh, I haven't read that. <laughs> I keep doing that to her, and it's probably very mean of me. So I don't know that much about my brilliant friends, I know that it's set in the 1950s and it's set in like Italy in Naples and it's a family saga set across multiple books. I decided since I recommended it to my mom so highly and she loved it, I should give the book a try. Even if it isn't going to be like my traditional read, every now and then I have to actually read the books that I recommend to my family. <laughs> so that we can discuss them. Okay, now back to half price books. So we have The Book of Unknown Americans by Cristina Enriquez. I picked up this book because there was some controversy going on with like the book world um, about a release called American Dirt and how it portrayed the narrative of immigration. And there were a lot of books being passed around that were deemed much better representations of immigration and the immigration system. This was one of those books and I put a bunch of them on my to-read list, any of them that weren't already on my list. So I remembered when I was in Half Price Books, I saw this like spine and I went, that's one of those books that people have been talking about on Bookstagram that are like really authentic and honest depictions of immigration. So I picked it up. I know it's about immigration. That's it. I just felt like it was a book that the community was talking about a lot and was talking about really highly and I felt like that meant that it was going to have a place in my reading at some point. And the last book that I purchased from Half Price Books is Once Ghosted Twice Shy by Alyssa Cole. This is part of a series and actually let me just grab the other two. So I mentioned this in a video and people said that if I was gonna read this I should read the first book, A Princess in Theory. So I went ahead and I bought A Princess in Theory and then I loved it and so I wanted to jump into Once Goes to Twice Shy but I know on Goodreads it's listed as book 2.5 so I decided to buy book two in the series, A Duke by Default. Um, and then I bought the other two books in the series too, but those are going to be in my March haul. So I have this whole romance series as it stands right now. This is a royalty romance series. I really liked A Princess in Theory. If you want to hear more of my thoughts, you can go and watch my February wrap-up. 
I really enjoyed it. I'm excited to read Once Ghosted Twice Shy, which is a FF romance, if you can't tell. I was very into the cover when it was released last year, but I bought all three of these so that I can get into the series and then I can read the other two as well. Okay, now let's talk about some books that were sent to me by publishers and subscription boxes. So we've got Scavenge the Stars by Tara Sim. This is a hardcover copy that was sent to me by Owlcrate, so this is the Owlcrate exclusive edition. That's what it looks like. That's what the original looks like. So clearly I already had a copy of Scavenge the Stars. I got it at Book Expo last year, but I did get a finished copy now. This is a retelling, a reimagining of the Count of Monte Cristo with a girl as the lead character instead of it being traditionally led by a man in the original. And this is supposed to be a rip-roaring adventure with a demisexual main character. Uh, the main character is also Desi. And this is one of the few retellings where I've actually read the original work. Like, usually I've seen interpretations or seen movies, maybe even read a fairy tale, but like, Count of Monte Cristo was a 1400 page book that I can say I read. I read that 1400 page book. So I'm really excited to read a retelling because it will make the seven months I spent reading that book feel way more worth it. I also had someone reach out from HMH Teen and they wanted to send me a couple of their upcoming queer releases. These are both out now so you can check them out. But we have The Stars We Steal by Alexa Dawn. This was in my most anticipated queer releases of this quarter. As is the other book that HMH sent me, Ink in the Blood by Kim Smezhkal. So I talked about both of these in that video. They sent me both. The Stars We Steal is a reimagining of Persuasion by Jane Austen. Again, I've actually read Persuasion. I'm feeling very ahead of the game on retellings this year. But this also has a hint of The Bachelor, and I believe that this has also a demisexual main character, if I'm recalling. So, excited to read this. And Ink in the Blood is a YA fantasy that is focused on tattoo magic, and it's supposedly also super queer. I originally thought that it was FF, but I'm not sure if that is the case, so I'll have to update you when I read this. Maybe you can look into some reviews of your own to determine the rep, but I believe it is about queer girls, whether or not it is about an FF relationship. I also got sent a book from Penguin Teen that I'm very excited about, The Storm of Life by Amy Rose Capetta. This is the concluding book in the duology that started with The Brilliant Death, which is a Italian mafia-inspired fantasy about magic and gender and revenge, and I'm very hyped to finish off this duology because I loved the first one and I can't wait to see Teo and Cielo like together again. It's gonna make me very happy. I got an arc from Penguin and that is I Know You Know Who I Am by Peter Kispert. This is a book I've talked about in numerous videos before. It's a short story collection. Every short story has a gay main character and every story focuses on secrets, the consequences of secrets, and lies. That's all I'm gonna tell you. It's already out because I've talked about it a lot and I don't want you all to get bored of me talking about this book before I've even finished reading it yet. I also have three finished copies that I was sent. So there's Bell Revolt by Lindsay Miller. This was sent to me by Sourcebooks. They already sent me an ARC, but now they sent me the hardcover. This is a standalone YA fantasy about two girls who swap lives. Uh, there is an ace main character who I believe, I believe there's like an FF romance and then the other main character's love interest is a trans guy so I'm very excited to read this. I was also sent This Town Sleeps by Dennis E. Staples. This was sent by Counterpoint and I'm so so thankful. It was one of my most anticipated releases of the year and I have started reading it. I'm really liking it so far. This is about an Ojibwa man who is living on a reservation and he starts seeing a man. They meet through a hookup app and this guy is white and is not out of the closet and the main character is kind of trying to deal with that. Deal with the fact that he wants to continue to hook up with this guy and navigate an interracial relationship and being queer in this small town really liking it so far. And the other one that I got sent was Real Life by Brandon Taylor, which I talked about in my February wrap-up. It was easily my favorite book that I read in February, and yet another book I've talked about in a lot of videos already. This is about a black queer man from Alabama, and he moves to the Midwest to pursue his graduate degree in biochemistry, and it's about navigating race and sexuality and the intersections of those in an unbelievably white, privileged town and it's also about grief and differences of grief and differences of experience. It's 
beautiful. It's beautiful. It's my favorite book that I read in February. It's one of my new favorite books ever. This was sent to me by Riverhead, and I am so grateful to them for sending this along. I don't know when I would have gotten to it otherwise, and I'm so glad that I read it when I did. I read it when it was new, because I can't wait to hype this book forever. I'm an idiot. I forgot another book I bought. Remembrance by Rita Woods. I bought this in February because it was my February patron chosen book of the month, which I'm still currently reading as of filming this. It's very early March when I'm filming this, so I'm not that far behind. Um, but this is fantasy, sort of like a contemporary and historical fantasy set in three different time periods. There's the present day, there's Haiti in 1791, and there's New Orleans in 1857. And it is about black women in each of these time periods and how their stories possibly overlap. I am like a hundred pages in as of filming this, 109, and I'm really liking it so far. It is unbelievably strange, but it grabs you right away, and I'm highly invested in finding out what happens. Okay, the last stack before we get to that book outlet box are books that you all sent to me. Thank you! It means the world to me! Um, I'm gonna talk about those now. So first of all, I have two books that were sent to me from Eris and Sai. Thank you so much to both of you for these books. We have The Midwinter Witch by Molly Knox Ostertag. This is the third book in the graphic novel trilogy following a gender non-conforming witch, um, and there's some background sapphic representation. I am obsessed with this graphic novel series and so glad I get to finish reading it. And they also sent me Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno, and this is a contemporary fantasy book that has an FF romance, and it's one of, like, the most hyped contemporary fantasy books about queer girls. I have wanted to read it for years, and now I get to. I'm really thinking this is gonna be on my Pride TBR this year because it's summery and perfect. So thank you so, so much to Eris and Sai for sending me these. Next up, I have two books that didn't come with a note, so I'm still in the process of trying to figure out who sent me these. If you sent me these, please let me know so that I can put your name in these books. I always keep all my notes from people so that I know who sent me what. They mean the world to me. So whoever this was sent me two books. The Mighty Heart of Sunny St. James by Ashley Herring Blake. This is a middle grade contemporary about a girl with a heart condition. It's also about the fact that this girl's mother has suddenly re-entered the picture when she has been gone for a while, and possibly she has feelings for girls. Ashley Herring Blake's books never fail to make me sob. Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World was one of my top favorite books that I read last year. It's one of my favorite books of all time, so I'm really, really excited to read The Mighty Heart of Sunny St. James. This was the most delightful gift to receive. Uh, they also sent The Rise of Kiyoshi by F.C. Lee, which is a companion novel to the Avatar The Last Airbender series. This follows Avatar Kiyoshi, who was a fierce bisexual avatar, and I'm probably gonna cry when I read this too, because I love Avatar The Last Airbender so much, my heart kind of wants to burst when I think about it. Anytime I read about queer people in the Avatar The Last Airbender universe, I cry. That's why I can't, like, I read The Legend of Korra comics and I want to read them again, but I'll probably cry again because it just means too much to me and I get overwhelmed. <laughs> so thank you so much to whoever sent me these two books. Oh my god. And these last three books were all sent to me by the same person, Alyssa. Alyssa has become my friend and uh, these were super nice Valentine's Day gifts. So she sent me three books about queer ladies. We have one I've already read before. That's Spinning by Tilly Walden. This is Tilly's graphic memoir. I read it from the library a couple of years ago and it was my introduction to the world of Tilly Walden, who is like up there in my top two of my favorite comic and graphic novel people working today. This is a mournful, heartfelt memoir about growing up queer and loving ice skating, and it's gorgeous. Alyssa also sent me two comic books or graphic novels that have been on my like queer girl must read list. There is Kim Reaper, uh, Grim Beginnings by Sarah Grayley. This is about a girl named Kim whose part-time job is being a Grim Reaper and she has a crush on a beautiful gothic angel. So Becca actually has a crush on Kim 
and finally gets up the nerve to ask him out and some like shenanigans ensue. It sounds adorable. I'm so into everything about this concept. And Alyssa got me Princess Princess Ever After by Katie O'Neill. Katie O'Neill wrote the Tea Dragon Society and the Tea Dragon Festival and has written a few other small graphic novels as well. This is a story about a princess saving another princess and going on adventures and falling in love and I'm probably gonna cry reading it too. Soft graphic novels about gay girls make me emotional to a level I can't convey. This was the nicest gift. I already said thank you to Alyssa but thank you again. These are brilliant. I'm so glad to have them in my collection. Okay, it's time. It's book outlet time. This isn't sponsored by Book Outlet, though it'd be great if it was. It'd be great if Book Outlet wanted to do anything with me in the future, but I just bought this because I was having an off day. And you know those days when you're having an off day and you're like, ah yes, spending money will produce serotonin? That's what happened. I forgot how many of these I bought! Okay, so I'm just gonna go through these in order of when I see them, because I didn't remember the things I bought. The serotonin was good, but fleeting. <laughs> so we have Fruit of the Drunken Tree by Ingrid Roja Contreras. This is a queer book, which is why it's been on my radar for a while. It's been on my Goodreads... It's been on my Goodreads TBR for a long while, but this is set in Colombia at the height of Pablo Escobar's Violent Rain, and it's about a young girl who is sheltered from all of the violence around her, and then her mother brings a live-in maid uh, into the home, and our main character starts to bond with her, starts to possibly fall for her, and this is also, you know, about the politics of Colombia at the time. This has basically every single one of my buzzwords in that it's, you know, it's queer, it's historical fiction, it is about a turbulent point in time and how women occupied that space, which is always of particular interest to me, so... I have wanted to read this for ages. I was so excited when I found it on Book Outlet. Oh, I also got What Should Be Wild by Julia Fine. Ooh, an unusual young woman must fight a curse that has plagued the women in her family for millennia. That sounds like all the bad apples. So this is about a character named Maisie who has the ability, a, a gift and a curse. Um, when she touches people, she has the power of resurrection or killing, so at one touch she can kill or resurrect. So she's been kept inside her whole life, she's been very protected, and her father has not told her about the curse that has plagued the women in her family for generations, that every single one of them has disappeared into the nearby woods, never to return. And these are woods that are supposedly haunted and will drive you mad, and so our main character is never going to go into them until one day her father disappears and she has to set out into the world that she hasn't been prepared for. A lot of people used to recommend this book to me. It was, like, talked about a lot alongside some books that I really love. I don't remember them now. I just remember how much people said I would really like this book, so I bought it. We also have Blackfish City by Sam J. Miller. Sam J. Miller, one of his YA books was on an anticipated releases list, and I've been interested in reading this. Sam Miller writes queer stuff. This is queer sci-fi. After the climate wars, a floating city is constructed in the Arctic Circle. Ooh. I say ooh as though I didn't at one point know what this was about and I wanted to read it and that's why I bought it. <laughs> so it's a big dystopian book about this city built after a climate war that is set up in kind of a horrifying way that is extremely divided along class lines and someone who rides in on an orca with a chance at changing all of that. I have heard really amazing things about Sam J. Miller, particularly about this book. It's why I've wanted to read his other work. I assumed I was going to read one of his YA books first, but it looks like I'm going to be reading his adult book first, which I'm very excited about. How many times have I said excited in this video? Don't count, please. Also have Armistice. So this is by Laura Elena Donnelly, and it's the sequel to Amberlo. Oh, Amberlo, which I read back in 2017 when it was released. They sent me this arc. I read it, and I loved it, and it's taken me this long to buy the second book. Hopefully eventually I'll get the third book and read all of them. Um, but Amberlow is set in an alternate world. It's very 1930s Berlin inspired. It's about a cabaret dancer, a spy for a fascist government, and the spy's boyfriend who runs a cabaret. And it's 
gay. The spy and the nightclub owner are gay. It was really dark and weird and wonderful and it took me ages but I'm going to reread this so I can read Armistice and so that I can eventually read the final book, Amnesty, I think. I'm pretty sure the last book is Amnesty but I'm very, I'm very pumped. I am probably gonna have to get Amber Lowe in these covers though because they released this and then they changed the covers so now Amber Lowe looks like that if you can see it. So I, I kind of want to get them all to match. I also got The Black God's Drums by Peta Jelly Clark. This was on my list because I've really wanted to read books by Peta Jelly Clark and then I read The Haunting of Tram Car 015. Ah, there it is. Last year after Tor sent it to me and I knew that I had to read more of his work. I assumed this was also going to be set in like magical Cairo because that's kind of what Peter Jelly Clark writes, but it looks like this is set in a magical New Orleans. This is about a character who is trying to get passage on a ship, um, a smuggling airship, and she does so with the help of a secret weapon called the Black God's Drums, and the other secret is that there is a Oya, the African Orisha of the Wind and Storms, is speaking in this girl's mind and giving instructions. I was fascinated by this, by this world and the writing, and this is like super hyped. So when I found it on Book Outlet, I was like, Fuck yes, it is time to place an order. We also have The Perfect Assassin by K.A. Dorr. This is adult, um, what is it? It's a specific type of fantasy. It's not urban fantasy. It's supernatural, which is, it doesn't even say. Fuck. Okay, well, it's the first in a trilogy, and it has an asexual main character and a bunch of other queer side characters. It's about, um, Amistan, who is an assassin. He's like the greatest assassin, and then a bunch of people start turning up dead, and so he starts to try to solve the mystery. K.A. Dorr is someone I've really wanted to support for a while. Um, she creates these amazing lists on Twitter of queer adult fantasy and sci-fi every single year, and I rely on them so heavily, and I really wanted to read this. I was interested last year, especially finding, like, adult books with asexual protagonists or any adult books with characters on the A spectrum is, like, so difficult, so... I finally bought this. I really wanted to support K.A. Door for a while. I'm glad I finally get the chance. Whew, two more books and then we'll be done. So these last two are both YA contemporaries by black women. So I think I bought this with the intention of maybe reading them during February, but like also because I wanted to read them. So I'm gonna read them anyway. It doesn't matter that I didn't get to them in February. So we have Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert. This follows a bisexual main character. I've never read anything by Brandi Colbert before, but her books come really highly recommended. I have The Revolution of Bertie Randolph, which was her release from 2019, and this one has been very divisive. People haven't been sure whether I would like it or not like it, and I just decided to finally make the jump, decide I'm going to read it, and determine how I feel about it for myself. I know that this is about a girl who is um, falling back into like supporting and being there for her brother who has recently been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, um, and he has this girl he's really in love with, and then the main character falls for the same girl. And I believe that this also has Jewish representation in our main characters. I remember hearing that as well. Like I said, this has been divisive. People haven't been sure about this. I've heard great reviews and really bad reviews. So it does have a Stonewall Award, which is a good sign. And I'll let you know what I think when I read it. And finally, we've reached the end. The last book in this book outlet haul, the last book in this haul, is This Is What It Feels Like by Rebecca Barrow. I don't know why I said it like that. Rebecca Barrow. There we go. It's these group of three girls who are a band and they want to compete in this music festival. The winner gets $15,000, which is pretty crazy. Um, but through preparing for this, this is also about this friendship, this group of girls kind of falling apart. I know one of them is a teen mom. I know at least one of them is queer. And I've like... This was one of those books that was released in, I want to say 2017, 2018, where all of a sudden we started getting these books with, like, beautiful smiling black women on the cover and everyone was praising everything in existence, everything in publishing, because that was 
such a shift. It was so nice. Like, this and Let's Talk About Love were huge releases in 2018 because, like, look at this black girl joy. It's delightful. I've been really interested in reading uh, Rebecca Barrow's next book. I believe this was her debut, so I decided to grab it because I thought it would be a fun read for whenever I get to it. Maybe Pride. I always say I'm gonna read everything during Pride, and I never have the time to read a hundred books during one month, shockingly. Okay, I just counted it up. I think that there were 38 books in this haul. 38! My god. I cannot be stopped. So yeah, what did you think of this haul? Was it all over the place? I tried to talk about everything effectively, but honestly, there are a bunch of these I just didn't know that much about because I've become that person now. Let me know if some of these stand out as ones you want to hear about right away, ones that I'm gonna love so that I can prioritize them. Plus, let me know a book that you purchased in February that you really loved. Love to hear about it. Other than that, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in another one very soon. Bye!